Danny True Magnified. So you have these vortexes on the northern and southern hemispheres of Saturn shaped like hexagons. And remember, with a hexagon, you have six sides, six vertices, and six angles. So three sixes. And then also remember with carbon 12, you have six protons, six neutrons, and six electrons. So again, three sixes. And remember about 98.9% of all organic life on earth is based on carbon 12. So that's 98.9% of the material world being based on three sixes. And then remember those vortexes, which are shaped like hexagons, are sending out those signals to the moon Enceladus, which is creating Saturn's largest ring, the one that's stretching out the farthest away from the planet. And remember, they say that these radio waves are being manipulated by these hexagons. These radio waves are literally being distorted by three sixes. And remember, these radio waves are electromagnetic energy. So it's literally like you have this energy of 666 being projected from Saturn. And again, 666 is going to take you to the composition of the majority of the physical world on the Earth. And remember Saturn's connection to the Earth. Everywhere you see Saturn, you always see the Earth. In Vedic astrology, the tarot, the zodiac even alchemy. When you're dealing with Saturn, you're dealing with a heavy attachment to the Earth. And then think about what they said about those vortexes on Saturn again, that the vortexes on the northern and southern hemispheres were sending out mixed signals, that the northern region is sending out completely different emissions than the southern region. And again, remember, we're dealing with hexagons here three sixes and those three sixes can also be connected to carbon 12 with the six protons, six neutrons and six electrons. And with the proton, you have a positive charge. And then with an electron, you have a negative charge, polar opposites. And again, think about it. They're saying that the North and South poles are sending out mixed signals, different opposing emissions a.k.a. polar opposites to opposing forms of energy coming from the same source is duality, negative, positive, and it's being projected out through these hexagons or three sixes, which once again can be connected back to carbon 12, which makes up the majority of the material world, including us human beings. We are carbon based beings. So you would think we'd be a part of that 98.9% of everything physical being mainly based on carbon 12, which would mean that our physical bodies would be based on six protons, six neutrons, and six electrons, three sixes. And we know those three sixes are attached to Satan, the devil, lower nature, low level energy. But then on the other side of that, we have carbon 13, making up less than 1.1% of all the carbon in the physical world. And with carbon 13, you have six electrons, six protons, and seven neutrons. So from carbon 12 to carbon 13, you have an increase in neutrons. Now we know that every single atom is made of protons, electrons and neutrons with the neutron being one of the most important parts of that atom because at the center of every atom you have a nucleus and the nucleus is what holds that atom together it keeps everything in place it's basically the foundation of an atom and the nucleus is formed by neutrons when the neutrons group together in the center they form the foundation of that atom the nucleus. And again, when you go from carbon 12 to carbon 13, you get an increase in neutrons. So in other words, you get a stronger nucleus, a stronger foundation 
for that atom. And also notice you move away from 666 to 667. And again, we know 666 is pointing us to all this low energy, low vibrational stuff. I mean, I'm pretty sure we all know the verse in Revelation. Here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man. And his number is 603 score and six. So 666, 666 is saying that this is the number of the beast and that it's the number of a man. And when it comes to man or human beings, we know that that 666 is going to take us back to us being carbon based life forms. And again, 98.9% .9 of that carbon being carbon 12, six protons, six electrons, six neutrons, six, six, six. It's talking about these human bodies, this flesh we are in. And it's saying that this is the number of the beast, this carbon 12, six, 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 because we know this material world and the full indulgence into this material world is going to lead you to Satan, giving fully into your root chakra, that red root chakra, a.k.a. the red devil, giving into all those things that tap into your lower nature, the lowest part of yourself, your basic instincts, your animal instincts, that beast inside of you, your carbon 12, 666, just like they say, Satan is the god of this world the God of the material world, AKA most of the world is comprised of carbon 12. That 98.9% .9 that is fully attached to this physical world, that 98.9% .9 that makes up the majority of the material world around us, the 666, just like a hexagon with the six sides, six vertices, and six angles. And that hexagon in its third dimensional form becoming a cube. So you got this material world being represented by Satan. You've got the hexagon in its third dimensional form giving you a cube. Then you've got all of this tying back to Saturn with those hexagons on Saturn. And remember, Saturn in alchemy is the black sun. So with human beings being mostly attached to carbon 12 and with carbon 12, giving you that 666, that animalistic lower nature, that beast within human beings, you can see it's basically that same representation of human beings being chained to that black cube of the devil. This is what we're getting with carbon 12. It's human beings being attached to the material world that feeds into their lower nature, their animalistic desires. Remember that astrological symbol for Capricornus, the goatfish with the goat at the head and the fish at the tail, the goat representing Satan and the fish representing humanity is showing you Satan is leading humanity. And all of this can be linked back to Saturn which is going to lead you to the hexagon 666, six, six, which is ultimately going to take you back to carbon 12. And then, of course, when you increase the foundation of that carbon atom or when you increase the neutrons of that element that life is literally based off of, you get carbon 13, this higher form of carbon that's also this extremely rare an elusive form of carbon, making up less than 1.1% of the physical world. It's a very rare thing to find in the physical world, carbon 13. So you would think there would also be a very rare amount of human beings that you could find possessing this carbon 13. And think about this with carbon 13, you have the number 13. And think about that in the story of Jesus and the 12 disciples. You have 12 people following Jesus, 12 people that are trying to be righteous and holy like Jesus, following in his footsteps as his 12 disciples. 
So you got 12 disciples and you got Jesus and together they form this group, which will make Jesus the 13th person in this group. Number 13. And you've got Jesus representing somebody striving to live a life detached from the material world, trying to live a righteous life while surrounded by a world that promotes the exact opposite, trying to be in the world, but not of the world and basically standing out as this very rare and different person, a minority amongst the majority, just like carbon 13, making up less than 1.1% of the material world. And remember with carbon 13, you have a more balanced nucleus, a stronger foundation, seven neutrons. And when you look at the nucleus or that foundation, you're going to see that it's not just neutrons that form that nucleus, but in order to have a nucleus, you also need protons. And what is a proton? A positive electrical charge, positive energy. So in order to create the nucleus, that foundation, you need positive energy and it comes together with the neutrons, which are pretty much what they sound like neutral, not positive, not negative, but a perfect balance. And again, when you couple that perfect balance of those neutrons with the positive energy of those protons, you form the foundation of that atom, the nucleus. And of course, to complete that atom, you do need electrons or a negative electrical charge, negative energy. And the electrons or that negative energy is going to surround that atom. But again, at its core, at the foundation of that atom, what is ultimately holding it together and giving it its strength is the neutrons, that perfect balance, and the protons, positive energy. So the nucleus or the very heart of that atom cannot be sustained without positive energy, without that positive energy helping to bring about that perfect balance. So you can kind of think of the proton like your higher mind or your higher self, the positive side of yourself going up to the mind and that positive side of yourself, your higher mind leading the way and forming that balance within yourself, keeping everything else in check, including those electrons, that negative side of you going down to your lower self, which represents the flesh and the material. So you can basically see it as the atom is designed for the positive, the higher mind to control and to keep in check the negative, the lower self in an effort to keep that balance. So basically mind over matter. And even when you look at the structure of that atom, notice how the proton is closer to the neutron or the neutral part of that atom, the balanced part of that atom, and how far away it is from those electrons, that negative energy. It's like the negative energy is necessary, but at a distance, away from the nucleus, away from what's actually keeping everything together, what's actually keeping everything balanced. Or you can look at it as the mind is separating itself from matter in order to create that balance. And again, we know that the neutron is that ultimate source of balance within that nucleus. The more neutrons you have, the stronger that nucleus becomes. So it would be safe to think that the more neutrons you have, the stronger that atomic structure becomes, giving that nucleus the strength to keep those protons at a distance from those electrons or keeping the positive at a distance from the negative. Because you'd have to think that if you have protons and electrons that are moving in closer on each other within an atom, then you're dealing with an atom that is about to collapse on itself, an atom that is about to implode. You've got a chaotic situation within the core of that atom. And again, the more neutrons you have, the less likely that atom is to self-destruct because the more neutrons you have, the more balance you have. And again, when you look at carbon 12 and you look at carbon 13, you're getting a much stronger balance with carbon 13. The balance or the neutrons are higher than the protons and the electrons. But then if you notice with carbon 12, 
those neutrons or that balance is on the same exact level as the positive and negative energy. There's no distinction. There's no true order. Everything is on the same level. And of course, when you put them together, it's a frequency of 666, which is pointing back to the material, the physical, the lower self. But again, you've got carbon 13 giving you more of a balance, more of a capacity to be able to keep the negative at a safe distance from the positive. Or in other words, to be able to keep matter from taking over the mind. And remember, you can connect that 13 to Jesus. And remember the story of Jesus being tempted in the wilderness by the devil. The devil takes Jesus to the highest mountaintop and he shows him all the kingdoms of the world. And he says, all of this is mine. I own all of this. This whole world is mine and I'll give all of it to you. The entire world. All you have to do is bow down and worship me. And Jesus basically told him to kick rocks, that he was not going to bow down and worship him and that his focus was on God in heaven. And you can see the lesson in this story. So Jesus is basically being used to be an example of somebody that is detaching himself from the material world. Somebody that's faced with all the temptations of the physical, the devil, and chooses to deny all of that and allow their higher self God in heaven to take control. And it's kind of a similar thing going on here with those neutrons, keeping those protons away from those electrons, keeping a strong foundation, staying balanced in an effort to keep the positive or the higher mind in control of the negative, the flesh, the physical. And think about it. If carbon 13 represents Jesus and being like Christ, then that will leave carbon 12 to represent the Antichrist or somebody going the opposite way of that example of Jesus. Somebody giving fully into the material world, fully into the flesh. And it seems like it would be in our best interest to try to move from that carbon 12 to carbon 13, where you're getting that stronger foundation, that stronger balance and break away from that 666. But if you look out into society, there's so much negativity placed on this number 13. It's always looked at as this unlucky number. When you start getting into all the superstitions, 13 is looked at as this number that should be avoided at all costs. And it's actually one of the bigger phobias out there. The fear of the number 13. You got a lot of buildings out there that don't even have a 13th floor because of the fear of this number and because of people's attempts to try to avoid it. And it's a fear that goes way back, but nobody knows where it originally stemmed from. But whenever you see that number 13, you're usually going to see it connected to negativity, you know, like Friday the 13th and stuff like that. But again, when we look at what 13 is pointing toward in human beings, it's definitely not something negative. I mean, it's the exact opposite. And again, that 13 can be connected to Jesus with Jesus giving us that example of breaking away from the material world living in the material world, but not becoming a slave to it, not allowing yourself to be chained to that black cube of the devil. And remember what Jesus said, no one gets to the father except through me. So you can't get to God without going through Jesus first. Or in other words, you can't connect with your higher mind, the higher version of yourself without following the example of Jesus. Remember, Jesus is God in human form, God in the flesh, a human being trying to show other human beings how to break their attachment to the material world and how to realize their full potential and to ultimately connect to God, to become one with God. Remember, he says, follow me to reach the kingdom of heaven. And we know God is in heaven. So where is heaven? Where is God? Well, he told you. Neither shall they say lo here or lo there for behold, the kingdom of God is within you. So it's telling you God is within us. And how do you find God within you? Well, you follow Jesus. You go where Jesus was going, which was breaking away from the physical world and going into his higher mind, the kingdom of God. And what is the physical world? Well, 98.9% .9 of it 
is six protons, six electrons, and six neutrons. Six, six, six. It's Satan, the material world. And so think about that story of Satan being cast down from heaven. Remember, Satan was originally in heaven with God before being cast down to the earth. But he wanted more acknowledgement. He wanted to be like God. He wanted more control in heaven. Now, think about those positive protons having control within the nucleus while those negative electrons sit on the outside. And then think about Satan being cast out and sent down to the lower realms, to the earth, where he is given control, just like the lower part of yourself, that part of you that is heavily connected to the flesh and to the things of the physical world. And just like Satan, if you allow it, it will try to take over the kingdom of heaven, a.k.a. your higher mind and become God there, too. And just like Satan and God cannot coexist together in heaven in the same way, those protons and those electrons cannot coexist together in the nucleus. In order for there to be balance, they have to be separated. And the protons, that positive energy, a.k.a. the higher mind, has to take control. Protons, electrons, positive and negative energy. You need both. But in order to build a strong foundation, you need the proper balance with the positive, the higher mind taking control and keeping the negative or the physical under control. 